Hello, I'm Mr. Mears, and what's your name? Yeah. Will. Will and I are very excited to kick off our One School One Book with Because of the Rabbit by Cynthia Lord. Um, everyone should have received a copy of this at our One School One Book kickoff this afternoon, and uh, we're looking forward to reading it with you. Will, who do you have with you? Spider-Man. Spider-Man. All right, and Will's going to be at my school next year. What grade will you be in? Kindergarten. Kindergarten. He'll be at your school, too. So you'll get midway kindergarten, and um, so this is, he's very familiar with One School, One Book, because he read Trumpet of the Swan last year with me, and Charlotte's Web the year before that. So, you ready to get started? Mm -hmm. All right, so like I told parents before, the chapters are not in numbers or numeric, they are just some facts about rabbits. So the first chapter is called Rabbits Are Crepuscular, Most Active at Dawn and Dusk. Crepuscular means most active at dawn and dusk. All right, let's get started. A rabbit, I heard Dad, Dad say into the phone, is he hurt? Mom sighed at the bowl of mashed potatoes in her hands. She likes it when all four of us can eat supper together, but when a main game warden gets a call, he has to go. Even if it's supper time and tomorrow is the biggest day of my life. How long has the rabbit been there, Dad asked. Mom had made all of my favorite foods, meatloaf, mashed potatoes, corn on the cob, and blueberry pie for dessert, but I was too excited to eat very much. My older brother Owen leaned toward me. Who's ahead, excited or scared? I grinned. When we were little, whenever we had mixed feelings about something, Owen and I pretend those feelings were running in a race. We hadn't done it in a long time, though. Excited is way ahead, but scared is coming on strong, I said. Mom passed me the bowl of mashed potatoes. I'm sure most kids feel that way on the night before school starts. I nodded, though we both knew that I wasn't most kids. Most kids went to school for the first time in preschool or kindergarten or maybe first grade. Not many started in fifth. In fact, I was pretty sure I'd be the only fifth grader at Lakeview Elementary who had never gone off to school before. It wasn't that I hadn't done schoolwork, I'd done plenty. My lessons had been at the kitchen table, though science experiments were done in the bathroom or on the front porch in case they exploded or leaked. I read books on my bed or on the couch or even floating in a kayak on the lake in front of our house. Being homeschooled had many good parts, but the best part had always been Owen. He, we made up games and shared secret jokes. We told each other stories and played rocks together. When Owen did something, he asked me if I wanted to do it too. Being four years apart didn't matter until last year. Owen told mom and dad he wanted to see what public school was like. So he went to high school and was gone all day. He made new friends, and then he added after school things like theater and playing right field on the baseball team. Do you like baseball? Mm -hmm. okay. Well, Owen's her older brother who played baseball. What he subtracted was me. Mom said it sometimes happens as brothers and sisters get older, and I didn't think it happened to us. Maybe excited has marbles in her pocket, Owen said. And she drops them on the track, so scared will slip on them. I imagined excited, pulling a whole handful of marbles out of her pocket and dropping them one by one. Okay, give me your address, I heard Dad say. Don't touch him, I'll be right over. As he put his phone in his pocket, Mom said, let me fix you a plate to take with you, Gabe. Thanks, but just put it in the fridge, Dad said, pulling on his green warden jacket. I'll warm it up when I get back. This shouldn't take too long. A woman found a wild rabbit stuck between two wooden pickets in her fence. Guess he tried to jump through and only made it halfway. I hope I don't have to take the fence apart. The lady is already fuming about being late for something. Can I come? I asked. But Emma, I made you all of your favorite things, Mama said. And you haven't even eaten more than a few bites. Thank you, Mom. I love it all, but my stomach's too jumpy to eat. I thought about school all summer, but now the big day was tomorrow. Little worries were creeping in. What if the other kids knew things that I didn't? What if everyone already had their own friends and didn't want more? Scared jumped right over those marbles. I could pass you tools, I called to Dad. The lady will probably be nicer with a the kid there. He paused, his hand on the doorknob, and glanced back at Mom. She sighed. All right, we'll save the pie for later. Don't keep her out late, though, Gabe. She has to be up early. I bolted from my seat so fast that our golden retrievers, Molly and Maggie, started barking like there was an emergency. She has two dogs. Do you have a dog? Yeah. What's her name? 
Maddie. Yeah. So they have Molly and Maggie. Aren't you coming? I asked Owen. He shook his head. I had to call Jordan. I'm hoping to convince him to try out for soccer with me. Soccer? When did he decide that? You can tell me all about it when you get home, Owen said. I hope we can't just can just wriggle the rabbit free, Dad said, as I caught up to him on the front porch. But let's bring something to put him in, just in case he's injured. I've got a big plastic bed in the barn. That should hold him until we get him to the rehab center. A bunny in a box, I said. Dad smiled. Rabbit ringer, that's my job. Animals are my favorite part of Dad's job. If the rehabilitation center is already closed for the night, Dad might even bring an injured or orphaned animal home with him. But once I came downstairs to breakfast and found a fox kit sleeping in a box by the wood stove. Another morning, Mom screamed when she went to put water in the coffee pot, and there was a turtle with a cracked shell in a plastic tub in our kitchen sink. A beaver with a bad foot even slept in a cage in her barn one evening. Owen said we want we run a wildlife bed and breakfast. Our dogs, Molly and Maggie, are used to it. They just give a new the newcomer a quick sniff and then accept it as belonging. Sometimes Dad even lets me come with him to release an animal back into the wild. As soon as he opens the cage door or the box flaps, a look flashes into the animal's eyes that I can't explain, but it knows it's free. Then there's a rush of wings reaching for the sky, or paws racing for the woods, and it's gone. The whole thing is over in seconds, but it's the best moment ever. The worst part of Dad's job is when he catches someone breaking a hunting law. They may, might have to pay a fine or even go to jail. Sometimes that conversation happens way out in the woods with no one else around, and the hunter is holding a gun. Dad would never take me on a call like that, though only on a quick, simple animal rescue, like freeing a stuck rabbit from a picket fence and watching him hop away if he's okay or helping him out if he isn't. See little sister? What? I should, know, I should have known better, though. Rabbits are tricksters. When I was little, I'd always beg my grandfather to tell me stories about Monsieur Lapine. Mr. Rabbit, it happened once, Pepe would say, and it was like the whole world slowed down to listen. I'd hang on on his every word until Monsieur Lapine had cheated and sneaked his way through every near miss and danger. Little, smart, fast as the wind on a mountaintop and full of surprises. Anything is possible with rabbits. So that's chapter one. So they're about to go rescue this rabbit. And it looks like this little girl who's a fifth grader is telling the story. So I'm interested to read more. I'm going to read some more tomorrow night. All right. That's chapter one of The Cause of the Rabbit. I hope you guys enjoy the story.